Hey guys, Shane here with the Wilderness Field Journal. As you can see, I'm geared up and ready for adventure. I'm about to be taking a backpacking trip in the Dolly Sods Wilderness in West Virginia. In this video, I'm going to show you all the gear that I'm going to bring on this upcoming trip. This is the gear loadout for a four day backpacking trip. Stay tuned. So as I was just saying, I have an amazing trip coming up. Some friends of mine and myself are going into the Monongahela National Forest, the Dolly Sides Wilderness to be precise. We're going to spend four days and three nights, we're going to be doing a lot of hikes, we're going to be doing some cool bushcraft stuff, camping obviously, it's going to be a great time. I absolutely cannot wait for it. A lot of times people notice that I carry a lot of gear when I go hiking, so I want to share with you guys what's in my pack. I love these kind of videos on YouTube and I thought this was a chance for me to uh, try my hand at it. So I'm going to get comfortable here. We are in the uh, home base here in southeastern Pennsylvania. So I'm going to lay out all my gear on this tarp and we'll go through everything step by step. So first and foremost, before I get into the gear itself, I'd like to talk a little bit about my load carrying systems. Uh, everybody always notices the survival vest when they look at my kit. Um, and people ask me, why do you carry that survival vest? It's kind of unusual, but I will tell you right now why I carry it. First and foremost is accessibility. I like having my gear right in front. I can get to it while I'm on the trail without taking my pack off. There's certain items that I like to have in the survival vest so there's easy access while I'm on the trail. Second reason is load distribution. I can be able to put some of my heavier items on the front of my pack or on the front of my chest rather than in my pack so I'm able to distribute the load more evenly across my body. And the third reason is, well, simply, I just like it. I love military surplus gear. I think it's really cool, um, and I like it. What can I say? I enjoy wearing it. I've taken it all across the country to many different interesting locations, so it's kind of fun for me to have this piece of kit. It's like a luxury item for me. Uh, secondly is the Kelty Tioga Pack. This is another kind of departure from the norm. Uh, I really like the fact that this is an external frame pack. You don't see a lot of them anymore. I like carrying bigger loads, uh, so this allows me to do that. It also coordinates well with the rest of my equipment. It, the straps ride just where I need them around the vest. has the same really good load carrying system that Kelty's known for, as I mentioned in my Red Wing review. So these are the items I use to carry my kit. I'm going to get all my stuff laid out and we'll start going through it item by item. I have a few categories that I want to talk about, um, but we'll get into that in a second. First, let me take all this gear off, we'll get comfortable. As I'm taking this kit off, I wanted to discuss a little bit about my mentality when it comes to backpacking. You'll hear a lot of people toss around the word, the word excuse me, ultralight backpacking. Well, clearly, I don't fall into this category. If anything, I'm more what you call an ultra heavy backpacker. And I'll explain a little bit about my philosophy behind that. Uh, some people like to camp to hike, and other people like to hike to camp. I'm one of the people that definitely enjoys hiking to camp. One of my favorite parts of a backpacking trip is when you get to camp, and you can set up all your gear and have fun at camp. So I'm willing to carry a little extra weight while I'm on the trail, so that when I get to camp, I have the equipment that I want, and I can do the things I want to do. Also, uh, capability. I like having equipment so in case things don't go as planned, I'm prepared for emergencies. That's something that I really believe in, and that's something that I think is worth carrying that extra weight for. Alright, so I got my pack laid out here. We'll start by talking about that. Like I said, Kelsey Tioga, this is a great pack. I love it. Um, and it's what I carry on these kind of trips, so I'm going to focus on that first. I'll start off by saying, talking about some of these items on the outside here. Um, first of all, I just have a real cheap foam sleeping pad. I mean, this is nothing special, but it's light and it's durable, and that works for me. Uh, one of my favorite pieces of kit that I could probably do without, but I feel like it's so worth it, is this chair. So I keep it on the outside of the pack, so if I stop while I'm on the trail, I can get it off and sit down. In fact, I'm going to use it while I'm filming this video. Uh, I know it's a bit of weight to carry this, 
but this is such a multi-function piece of kit. This is one of these chairs where it's got two straps that hold it uh, so you can lay back. And to me, when you're hiking all day, carrying heavy loads, to be able to sit down and rest your back, it just, it's worth the weight to carry it. It means so much. Uh, also, it's a multi-function thing. You can use it to fan the fire, which you'll probably see me doing in West Virginia. You can use it as a sitting pad. Uh, I also use it sometimes as a pad to sleep on because you can unbuckle it, it spreads out. Um, but for right now, I'm just gonna kinda kneel on it while I'm shooting this video. Makes it a little more comfortable. Uh, that's an EMS chair, by the way. Another item that I have strapped to the outside of the pack for quick access is these shoes. This was almost more like an impulse buy. I actually really hate those Croc sandals that are so popular. These are just cheap Walmart knockoffs. But we're going to be doing a lot of stream crossing, so I think these would be good for a quick stream crossing so I don't have to get my boots soaked. They're really light, they're really cheap, whatever, we'll give them a try. Uh, so that's the outside of my pack. I'm going to get into the main contents now. So I'm going to start off with the contents of my pack talking about one of the most important parts of your kit, which is the shelter system. Shelter system enables you to get a good night of sleep, and that is worth so much when you're in the woods. As I open this up, there's a couple of things in the top that don't have to do with that shelter system, but I have them up here just because they're light and it's a good place to keep them. You'll notice the shelter takes up the majority of this pack. I have my raincoat. It's just a marmot raincoat that uh, I keep on top in case, in case I need quick access to it on the trail. Toilet paper, baby wipes, and hand sanitizer. I don't think I really need to explain that. I decided to bring an entire roll of paper towels. Another unconventional thing to do. But I have found that these are so useful around the campsite and they're so light, they are multifunctional. I just put them in this trash bag. Definitely gonna take them along. Now we get into the shelter system. So, main part of the shelter system is this item here, which is my hammock. We'll talk a little bit about this hammock. Um, I love this hammock, much like the survival vest. This is an item I've had for years and used all over the country. Hundreds of times sleeping in this. Have it in a dry sack, just a cheap Walmart dry sack. Um, but I'm gonna pull it out. It's a mosquito hammock. I'm definitely gonna do another video on this because this is such a good piece of kit. Um, it's got a built-in mosquito net, as the name implies, and a built-in rain fly. It's got lines, stakes, everything I need right in this pouch. So the next part of your shelter system is your sleep system. Oops. This takes up actually the most room in my pack. This is a Slumberjack sleeping bag. Um, ironically enough, I got this bag from my wife's uncle. It was a hand-me-down and it's one of my favorite pieces of kit. Thanks a lot, Uncle Jay. Um, I carry a cocoon air pillow. This is a lifesaver, so comfortable. And the final part of the shelter system is the clothing. Now, the main purpose of this clothing, I think, is to keep myself warm when I sleep at night. There's other clothes in here that help just during the day, but what's most important, in my opinion, is being able to sleep soundly because I'm warm. Um, I'll show you what I got here. I have a spare pair of pants. Really vital. I have spare underwear, little beanie hat, and this is what I plan, plan to sleep in every night. I have a sort of a cotton poly blend thermal un long underwear and thermal shirt. That with the hat should keep me pretty warm. Uh, I also have some heating pads, some of these Thermacare heat wraps because sometimes my back hurts me a little bit and uh, they can also keep you warm in your sleeping bag. Got a couple extra spare pairs of socks, a couple extra spare pairs of underwear, and just a cotton t-shirt. No big deal. So the next thing I'm gonna move on to, going down the order of survival priorities, we went to shelter, which is in time reference your most important priority, and then the next would be water and food. So I'm gonna talk about that right now. I have. So the way this pack is designed, this is meant to be the sleeping bag pocket, but I think that's kind of a poor idea because 
as I showed you a minute ago, your sleeping bag is the biggest thing you carry. So why not have that in the biggest pocket? I find that my gear actually fits much better in this pocket. So, the other thing is I can get to it when I'm on the move if I have to. First of all, I have my mess kit, which I'm going to show you that in more detail. So this is my cook kit with a few modifications. This is pretty much what I carry every time I go backpacking. I keep it in a cheap bag just to protect all my other gear from the soot that this gets from the fire. If you recognize this pot, this was the same pot I used in my breakfast in the bush video, the MSR Seagull. Inside of it, I have some spices. Here I have garlic powder, cayenne pepper, and turmeric. They're all good for their unique flavors and medicinal properties. I have salt and pepper, which I think I'm going to get a new dispenser before I go. That one's messed up. Uh, honey which is a great general purpose sweetener and uh, medicinal properties as well. A couple of Scotch-Brite scrubbers to clean up. I have these three just cheap dollar store bowls that I use. Um, a very lightweight spatula and a very lightweight spoon to cook with. To eat with, I have a fork and spoon that are stainless steel for durability. And then I carry some camp suds, which this was not only going to be for cleaning up, but it'll also be my uh, hygiene soap while I'm on the trip. And one of the most important things besides gear when you're cooking is oil. Uh, same squirt bottle that you probably saw in the bush breakfast and MSR Seagull. That's my standard cook kit. So another thing in the food and water department is this. Uh, in this little dry sack, I have a Sawyer Mini filter which some of you may have heard of before. Uh, I've actually never used these before, but friends of mine have, and they work so well that I thought I would try it. Um, basically, you have this bag that you fill with contaminated water, and you screw Sawyer Mini onto the end of that, and you can just squeeze it out and purify water. It's supposed to be really good. It was cheap, and it's light. Uh, in addition to that, I'll be boiling water in my pot. I also have U.S. military canteen strapped to the side for water purposes and a couple of these bags which might be a little funny but I actually, if I need to carry water from a water source to where I'm camping, I can use these Ziploc bags to do that. Mm. Okay, and last but certainly not least is the food itself, which is this big bag here. And I'm going to lay this out and go through it all with you. Okay, so for food. Pretty much all the food I have for the four day trip is in this dry bag right here. Uh, I'm gonna bring some fresh food on the first day, which I haven't included, but I'll talk to about that in a second. If you've seen my breakfast in the bush video, you probably know I like to cook. So I go a little fancier than a lot of people with hiking food, but this is my take for a four day backpacking trip. I've divided all my meals by day. So first day is Friday. So for the trip out, I got some different munchies like uh, Cliff Bars and granola. Um, but when we get there, for dinner, I'm going to make deer burger with fresh peppers and fresh onions that I'm going to hike out because it's my first night. And then I got some egg noodles here. We're going to do buttered noodles. Uh, and then I have some candy, some chocolate in there for dessert, and some milk, some shelf-stable milk because I love milk. And then that gets me into Saturday. So Saturday's bag, I have, um, for breakfast on Saturday, I'm gonna bring some eggs. So I'll have fresh eggs that morning for breakfast. I also have some instant coffee mix uh, to go with that. So that should be pretty good. Um, for lunch, I you can't see it because it's in this bag, but I have some squid and some ramen noodles that I'm gonna have. Uh, I also have, oh yeah, there's the squid right there. I also have some various snacks in here for lunch. Uh, as I said, I'm going to have the squid. And then for dinner, I have a dry Italian sausage and some rice and beans and some dehydrated broccoli. Uh, I also threw a wrap in here because if I feel like I want an extra snack, I have some peanut butter packets and those wraps. Um, I also have a protein, like vitamin drink in here uh, for some added calories and some added nutrition. So that's Saturday. It's a heavy bag. Oh, and I also have chocolate for dessert. I gave myself two Snickers bars 
and two Giara Deli chocolates every night for dessert, which is a lot, but you know, it's, I have a sweet tooth, what can I say? Saturday is a heavy bag because a lot of that might spill over into following days. Sunday for breakfast, wouldn't be a trip with flapjack without some flapjack. So I have uh, instant pancake mix in here. I'm going to cheat a little bit and do instant pancakes. And I have um, some packets of coconut milk to, or some coconut oil to cook them in, excuse me. And then for lunch, I have some tuna packs and some more wraps. I uh, also have an assortment of lunch uh, snacks and drinks and stuff in here. For dinner, I have some dry peppered salami with mac and cheese and some dehydrated beets. Um, also snacks, you know, and candy for dessert. So that's Sunday. And then Monday is going to be kind of a bit of a leftover day. I'm going to break down and try one of these mountain house meals. Uh, I never had one before. I got this one as a freebie from REI. As you know, uh, I'm not too big on the dehydrated camping meals, but why not? Give it a try. We'll check that out. Maybe I'll love it. Um, I also have some backup um, oatmeal in case I'm not too into that and just snacks and uh, stuff for on the trail for a lunch and whatever leftovers I have from before. And that's pretty much it, my food for those days. Oh, uh, I also have some stuff inside here. I almost forgot in this long side pouch here, I have a few other snacks for just on the trail. Um, of course, uh, can't go on an expedition like this without bringing a little whiskey along. Uh, we're, this is a vacation for us, so we're gonna enjoy it. So, got a little bourbon here. Um, got some dried blueberries, some trail mix. This is monster mix from Target. I love that stuff. Some beef jerky, epic beef jerky. This stuff is pretty good. And, oh, and a bag with just drink stuff. Various teas and drink powders and stuff. And a little uh, peanut M&Ms. Sometimes you need a little boost of sugar on the trail. Grab some of them. So that's it for my food. Uh, I want to go heavy on the food. Uh, I always try and bring a little extra. You never know if something might happen. You get stuck out there. So uh, you also don't want to go hungry when you're out there. You want to enjoy it. So that's everything for my food. Okay, so moving past food, the next thing on the lineup of importance is utility, which is obviously also important but uh, it's the next thing I'm gonna discuss. So a lot of the utility items I have in these kind of exterior pockets because I can get to them uh, on a trail if I need to, hopefully not, but that's sort of where they're organized. Um, one of the first things is in this pocket right here, I have this flower sack uh, with some cordage in it. I also have it tied in with a piece of paracord in case it falls out of that open pocket, I won't lose it. Uh, in this lower pocket here, I have some utility items. I have just a cotton t-shirt rag, which is useful for so many things. I also have these disposable latex gloves. Well, they're nitrile gloves, but disposable gloves, just in case I need to touch anything really sappy or sooty or dirty, I can wear these and just throw them away without having to get water and soap to wash my hands. They're, they're light and very useful. Um, Moving on to this main utility pocket, I have on top the otter box case that I'm going to use for all the camera gear. Um, got cords and plugs and everything in there. Keeps it protected and dry. The knife that I'm going to be bringing on this trip is the Pathfinder Camp King. It's uh, Pathfinder and Jeff White. This is a really, really good knife. This is a gift by my parents. Thanks a lot, Mom and Dad. Uh, this is an ultimate survival item. We'll probably talk about that sometime in the future. I uh, have a spare dry sack with really nothing in it. I can just use it for whatever I need it for. Got a headband, a headlamp. Uh, have a fire kit, which I'll just show you this when I'm using it on the trip. Basically, just uh, it's uh, Altoid tin with some cotton balls and birch bark. I got a thick lighter, a couple of candles, and some fat wood. Start a fire anywhere with that. Uh, I got some more bags for trash and, and to put stuff in. Uh, I also have a belt because uh, I guess I kind of should go with my clothing, but I can use it for the knife. That's why I have it in this pocket. Um, I also have a little utility bag here, which I have 
some Gorilla Tape, some more candles, spare batteries for my headlamp, another lighter. I have a few note cards that I can use for taking notes if I need to, and I also have a, a pencil in here. So just general utility pocket. And then utility continues onto this stuff pocket on the side. Um, this is another open top pocket, so I have everything tied down so I don't lose it. I have a lightweight plastic shovel. Um, when it comes time that you need a shovel, I don't like messing around with a digging stick. I like to have a shovel. Um, I also have a Sven saw, which you'll see in action if you watch the trip videos. This is a great saw. On the top of the pack, this isn't so much utility, but I like to have it on the outer pocket so I can get to it on the trail. I have boonie hat, military surplus, boonie hat. There's a lot of open plains in this area, so I might need this out in the sun. Moving down the list, um, one of the final things to talk about is first aid and hygiene. Um, I already showed you I have the camp suds in my cook kit, so I'll just use that for hygiene. I also have another cotton t-shirt rag. These things, yet again, super useful. I can use it as a towel or for cleaning. And then the first aid kit. So this is the first aid kit that I carry. I'm going to show you the contents right now. So this is the first aid kit that I'm going to be carrying on this trip. I keep it in a dry sack just to keep everything contained and dry. And then I'll show you what I have inside of it. An ace bandage, good for both sprains and to hold bandages on. Another cotton t-shirt rag because you might need that to clean and wash with. Um, I have two different bags here. This bag has pads, tape, a pair of scissors, some alcohol swipes. It's got a couple of really thick absorbent surgical sponges. I always like to have something that will absorb a lot of blood if somebody gets a big cut. Um, I also have some regular just band-aids in there too. And then this one, I have a wound closure kit um, that I've used in the past. Really, really valuable if you get a serious cut. Uh, I have an instant cold compress, which I know is a lot of weight for a first aid kit, but I think my most likely injury is a sprain or an ankle twist, so I like to have that ice pack. Some tweezers, all kinds of different medications. I have Neosporin, I have Pepto-Bismol tablets, I have Advil, I have sinus medication. I also have some alcohol, some sting kill swabs, a little lighter in there to, for disinfecting things. And that's about it. Pretty simple first aid kit, but it's certain specific things that I think are really worth the size and weight. So that covers most of what I have. As you can see, I have a gear explosion behind me here. After this video, I'm going to have to pack it all up. Um, but some of the more little items I keep in my survival vest, and now I'll show you what's in there. First of all, my water bottle. Like I said, I keep this on my hip right here. I drink it the entire time I'm walking. I drink a lot of water when I walk. Um, and I have just a lightweight, cheap USGI canteen. That's what I'm carrying my water. And I have better water bottles, but this one I decided to take because it's so light. And then in the same pouch, I also have the Pathfinder canteen cup. Um, get this out of here. I'm sure if you watch YouTube, you've probably seen this before. It's very popular, but it is a great piece of kit. So there's this little sleeve right here that you can put in the coals to get your pot up off the coals. And they call it the stove, but it's more just like a metal shell. And then here's the cup. And it also has a lid. And yet again, you might think, well, stainless steel cup, that's a lot of weight. Why wouldn't you just bring one of those collapsible plastic cups? It's because of the utility. I can do so much more with this cup than a plastic cup. I can boil water in it. I can cook my tea and coffee in it over the fire and then drink it out of the same cup. It's really an awesome piece of kit. And an added bonus of it is when I put my canteen into the pouch, it goes in a lot easier because it's got this metal sort of sleeve to sit in. It's a great piece of gear, worth the wait. Moving along, these two pockets are empty right now. I'm going to keep my phone and my camera here because I'm going to be taking pictures and filming the whole time. Uh, this pocket here is mostly empty. I have some tissues in it, but I'll probably put some snacks in there. That's why that's empty. 
this pocket here, I carry my headlamp in, which I probably don't need most of the time when I'm hiking during the day on the trail, but I will probably be doing some night scouts where I can just wear the survival vest, so that's why I have that there. This is a Black Diamond Storm headlamp. It's pretty good, pretty bright and waterproof. Uh, in the bottom, I also keep a little pack of spare batteries. You never know when you accidentally leave it on or something and you need to have those spares. Plus, being out there for four days, I you know, might use up my batteries. Right next to there, I have a S Beaner with a little compass thermometer whistle thing. This is just a Coglins item. Um, always want to keep a whistle handy where you can literally bend over and if you fall over and you're hurt and you need to get assistance, you can alert people that way. And it's kind of nice having the thermometer too. And I use a compass a little bit. It's not the most accurate compass in the world, but it's handy. Also, I have a little button light on here. More, more of a, just an emergency light than one I would actually use. Uh, I got a couple of clips here. I have a nest beaner and an Alice clip. I can clip other things onto here as needed on the trail. Over on this side, I carry a poncho. This is actually a German military poncho. Um, but the reason I carry this rather than other styles of ponchos is, as you can see, it's got some grommets in it that you can use it like a tarp so I can tie it out and make a shelter out of it if I had to. I'll probably also keep maps in this pocket while I'm on the trail, just because it's big and you can slide a map into there. Moving on below here, I have a can of bear mace. This is bear country that we're going into. It's black bear territory, not grizzly bear territory, but you can never be too safe. Keep it right at hand. While I'm hiking, I can get this out at a moment's notice if I ever encounter an emergency situation. It's a very good thing to carry. Um, and to be honest with you, uh, it can protect me from anybody or anything or anyone that tries to threaten me. I have bear mace to take care of it. Moving on to the side here, I keep some leather gloves. These are just kind of a cheap Walmart glove. They call them sport utility gloves. But I like them because they have this mesh back. Makes them cooler when you're hiking on a hot day. And I like to keep them handy while I'm hiking because, you know, a lot of times I'm grabbing onto rocks, grabbing onto trees. Obviously, these are the same gloves I'm going to use around camp for doing firewood and handling hot pots on the stove. But I like to keep them handy while I'm hiking because you never know when you need to grab something and you need that glove. Also, if I get a little chilly, I can put them on. Uh, moving into the survival vest, this is what's great about this. Not only does it have the pockets on the outside, but it also has four pockets on the inside as well. So on this side is my utility pocket where I keep a small Oppenel knife. These are great knives if you ever heard of them. They're uh, very lightweight. This is usually what I use for my cooking and cutting food just because it's small and handy for those kind of tasks. And also, the mechanism is very simple, so it's easy to clean. Typically, I would carry a sharpening stone in here and a bigger multi-tool, but I'm trying to go light because it's such a major trip. So I just have this little cheapy Cabela's multi-tool. It's a lot lighter than the SOG that I normally carry, but it still has what you need, which is needle-nose pliers. Very handy. On this side, on the lower pocket, I keep some just emergency supplies. I have... Uh, some extra um, surgical pads in case I would get wounded and all I have on me is my survival vest. I also have a little container of DEET bug spray. I try not to use it a lot, but you definitely want to have it. You never know when you're going to encounter some bad bugs. Uh, quick clot, quick clotting spud. Also, absolute emergencies if I hurt myself real bad and all I have on is a survival vest. Um, I also have a little emergency repair kit in here. I made this myself. All it is is just wire ties and wire and duct tape and needle and thread and a couple of those kind of things that you can repair stuff on the fly. Um, have a bottle of Purell, good for both starting fires and keeping your hands clean. And I have a pretty good compass, a Sunto, uh, with a mirror and a base plate. I can strike lines and azimuths with this, like I can really navigate with this thing. As opposed to the little button compass on this Coglins tool. 
And that's it for that side. On the other side, I have my fire pocket, which in there, I carry the absolute number one best fire starting tool for survival that there ever was. Can you guess what it is? Of course, it's a Bic lighter in bright orange in case I lose it. I also carry an electronic Bic lighter. This is something I learned about recently, is this will light even when wet. So that's why I carry that. And then I have a really large ferrocium rod from the Pathfinder School. We'll show you that in action. That You can start a lot of fires with that too. In a plastic bag because these ferrocium rods can get a little like, I don't know, the metal kind of flakes off a little bit. It's funky. So that's the end of that. I also in this pocket have a key ring so I can put my car keys, clip them onto this ring, and stuff them into that pocket. That's obviously a really important thing, so I keep it secure inside a pocket clipped on. Down here, I have a cotton bandana, which, as you probably know, has a million and one uses as well. I have a mosquito bug net. This is something I don't use too often, but man, to be honest with you, the bugs are kind of biting me right now. <laughs> feel like I could use it right now. But, uh, Good to have, in case the bugs are just killing you, you can put that on. Um, have an emergency space blanket. Probably not gonna use this, but if I'm stranded somewhere and all I have is a survival vest, I could make a shelter out of just this. Uh, I also have a very compact um, Frontier emergency water filter, which Yet again, not going to use this, but I keep it on me in case I'm stranded somewhere and I, all I can do is just drink out of a puddle, I can do this. Uh, on the side of this canteen pouch, I have sunscreen, just a little SPF 70 beach defense. And in the other pocket, on the other side, I have some water purification tablets. Um, yet again, never use these, but just in case of emergencies. So that's the survival vest. As you can see, it carries a lot of useful items and it's all the little things that sort of disappear into your pack. I can keep them organized in all these pockets and I know exactly where everything is. For footwear, aside from the cheap water crossing shoes that I showed you earlier, I'm going to be going with the Vasque Ericsson GTX boots. Uh, these are relatively new purchase, uh, but I have broken them in and they work really well. I think these are going to be great for this trip. So that's about everything. As you can see, I definitely am an ultra heavyweight backpacker. Um, yet again, my mentality here is I would rather have the equipment to do what I want to do when I'm at camp than have a lightweight pack for my hike out there. So I focus on the gear that I enjoy using more than counting every ounce. Um, this pack as it is rounds out about 50 pounds. When I add some fresh food and some water to it, it'll probably be in the 56, seven pound range. That's a lot of weight to carry, but I kind of enjoy the challenge of it. It's a good workout and I enjoy using the gear when I'm out there. So for me, that works. Obviously this is not a how-to video of how you should pack your pack. This is just the way I do it. So keep your eyes on my channel. Look out for the Dolly Sods backpacking trip that we'll have up soon and have a great day.